Hi, we're Anders Varner. Welcome to Barbell Shrug. We are on YouTube today, not on the podcast. Uh, we're hanging out at Strength Feed in Raleigh, North Carolina. Sam Miller, he talks about men's health. And we're going to go on a deep dive into testosterone today. So, uh, dude, testosterone is like the craziest thing to me because in all the years of like getting into my 20s, into my 30s, this conversation, I've never met a single person that actually has the T levels that their body is supposed to. It seems like we're all faced with low T, which ends up in pellets, which ends up in exogenous um, testosterone. If you're really going down the rabbit hole, there's just endless, endless treatments for it. But I feel like it's more of a, there's natural remedies. But at the highest level, like what is testosterone and why do people have, why is it so rampant that there's low testosterone these days? Yeah, so to simplify it, you know, testosterone is a reproductive hormone, uh, exists in both men and women. So a lot of people forget that women have testosterone as well. Uh, obviously, we're focusing on men's health today. So it's the primary male androgen. And so it's responsible for all sorts of things from energy, our immune system, uh, cognitive function, actually low testosterone is associated with depression, anxiety, uh, even cardiovascular risk. So a lot of people think, oh, like high testosterone is bad for your heart. It's not really the case. You know, testosterone is necessary for overall optimal men's health and just well-being, recovering from the gym, feeling your best, um, and even performing well at work too. Uh, what is, why is it so rampant that everyone I talk to is trying to find a way to increase testosterone? Like what is it in our society or what are the systems in place that are really causing such low T in men? Yeah, I think it's kind of a multifaceted reason. You know, our, our lifestyles have really changed a lot. You know, we still have the same basic physiology. It's kind of like if you or I were to try and make content um, on like a typewriter, we can't do it. But we ask our body to do things that just seem ridiculous yeah. thinking about it. You know, thousands of years ago, we'd be walking around, maybe we're hunting, maybe we're gathering, just doing basic things, basic survival, just, you know, eating, sleeping, a lot of movement and right now you know we've gotten away from some of those primal tendencies we sit in front of a computer all the time we are on an iphone we could get an email you know from deborah and hr and we're stressed out for two weeks because of deborah, whatever happened deb Deb's you know whatever janet you know, susan you know there's always <laughs> there's always, always somebody but deb uh, i feel like it's a deb and yeah. karen man yeah. deb and karen get a bad rap but anyway so you could get that stressful email. Um, we just live in a higher stress society, but I think we see a lot of changes in circadian rhythm as well. Uh, I think the statistic is we're at about anywhere from one third to one half of the testosterone that our either grandfathers or great grandfathers had. Uh, and depending on the study that you look at, the research, you know, people argue those semantics, but either way, it's not good, yeah. right? Like a third to half is just not where we wanna be at all, uh, or excuse me, less than half. Um, and, and that's just, I think there's a lot of things that go into it. One, our, our food quality has changed, um, you know, the, our, our nature of stress, circadian rhythm, which that's basically our biological schedule. So sleep-wake cycles, um, lesser quality sleep. We've got a lot more going on in our environment in terms of things that influence other hormones in the body yeah. like cortisol, melatonin, and things like that. Yeah. When I think about like the system or the ecosystem that we live in, it's frightening how far away from nature it is. Right. Like us just being in this gym, we had to create almost a playground for us to pick up heavy things. Where if you lived in the real world, you'd have to go move trees or you'd have to go pick up rocks. Like all of this stuff would be just a part of your daily life. And like being dirty, there would you would never just be showering twice a day. It doesn't make sense. And now we're in this gym, it's got these like fake fluorescent lights um, we've completely taken ourselves out of nature in yeah. as many ways as possible. Um, is there, are there simple solutions almost like where, where can people just start to like game the system a little bit, just to like increase their exposure to natural elements, um, versus sitting in their office under fluorescent lights, you know, staring at a computer in this whole made up world that we live in. Right, you mentioned fake lights a lot, and that's one really simple thing too, is just getting a little bit more vitamin D, getting outside, light exposure, fresh air. Some people are big proponents of grounding. Uh, I think the main th theme here is what those things, what are those signaling to our body? Yeah. So, you know, initially when we were, you know, cave people, whatever you wanna call it, we would go outside, we'd get sunlight early in the day, and then once it was dark outside, we'd slowly wind down and go to sleep. We weren't watching Netflix, we weren't checking our iPhone, weren't doing emails, weren't on the laptop. 
and that blue light exposure can influence the pineal glands production of melatonin. So that's yeah. just another gland, kind of similar to your pituitary. And melatonin is that, that shot that fires that sort of signals that we're winding down for the day. It works sort of inversely to cortisol, which is that, that will release like before a workout or even when you drink caffeine, you get those catecholamines and different neurotransmitters firing. Um, so I think part of it has to do with cortisol levels. I think part of it is our, our exposure to these different things, these artificial lights, not getting enough sunlight. Uh, some of it's food quality. And I think also our, we have this significant change in our, in our nervous system and the way that we operate. So our nervous system is kind of like our operating system. We have a sympathetic state and a parasympathetic state. So the sympathetic state is more of that fight or flight or that drive, that go. Yeah. Um, whereas parasympathetic is that rest or digest. And I think where we're seeing a lot of changes is as we move into the 21st century, there's less variance between the two. Whereas, you know, even in our think about our grandfathers, there was probably either a time of intense work or you're pretty much relaxed and just hanging out. Yeah. And that's that's really and that's where we get into science like HRV, heart rate variability, and we're studying the difference of you know, for a crossfitter or power lifter or Olympic lifter or, you know, someone doing the one ton challenge, your ability to control your heart rate, the variability in post-workout, get back into that yeah. parasympathetic state is huge for recovery, but it does also play a role with testosterone levels as well because your nervous system, that psychological connection to the rest of your body, you can't tell me that's not influencing your hormone production and your endocrine system. I think a lot of people try to disconnect those and they teach very mechanistically. They're like, well, this is your nervous system and activation and this is your, yeah. these are your hormones and really like there's, those are very interwoven concepts. Yeah, I actually, when I'm lifting now, try to think about the creating as much intensity through like the load but being as calm as I possibly can while doing it. And a lot of that came from working with, uh, not working with, but when I interviewed Ben Pekulski, he's like super into- Oh, he loves that. Um, just the overall nervous system and how, um, how you recover and like going and doing like five minutes of meditation after you have an intense training session. Just anything you can do to take your body from the sympathetic state into the parasympathetic. Um, to wrap up part one though, like how, what are some of the signs that people can start to see in themselves as far as like when they might be experiencing low T um, and then once they go get tested, like what levels or where on that spectrum kind of should they be? Yeah, so it's important whether you're looking at something specific to hormones or not to track your biofeedback. Um, so big, easiest way to remember it is I call it shreds. So sleep, hunger, recovery, energy, digestion, and stress. Uh, oh, when those are out of balance, you guys see, yeah, Ooh. I know, <laughs> I know we're not going supplements, but you know, with, with those, anytime you see multiple areas of biofeedback changing, so you're lethargic, you're getting sick more often, changes in sleep, changes in recovery, um, brain fog, you know, that, that's a huge thing. Libido and sex drive is another big one. Uh, but for a lot of guys I, I've noticed, you know, we can still have that normal reproductive function, but really be, you know, maybe you're getting sick more often. Yeah. Uh, you're seeing changes in other areas of your life, maybe not quite that excitement or drive uh, because testosterone is closely related with, you know, other things going on in the body as well. So I'd say the first thing is check your biofeedback before you even need to get labs. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a key driver and, and make sure you're, you know, you're uh, crossing your T's and dotting your I's. Like if you're not sleeping, you're not eating enough, there's some really easy ways to improve that. I think we're going to talk about that yeah. in the next couple episodes. Uh, make sure you get down into the description. Uh, 